Hi, and welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to look at one of the problems from the USSR uh, Olympiad problem book, uh, the chapter on integer equations. And I like this particular problem because it definitely forces us to think outside the box, yet it uh, involves many of the methods and techniques that we've grown familiar with. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. We want to solve in positive integers the equation uh, 1 factorial plus 2 factorial up to and including x factorial is equal to some square y squared. Now I have to say for the record that uh, I really don't know how to relate uh, the sums of factorials to some integer squared, and I, I don't even think there exists a generalized method for doing that. So uh, given that, uh, this is essentially a sequence problem, and one of my favorite techniques for analyzing any series or sequence is to first uh, look at the series or sequence in table form, at least some some portion or example from that series or sequence and see if we can understand the nature of the sequence or series and try to get some some clues as to how to proceed and since we really don't know how to proceed on this problem this is definitely the best way to to go at it go at it so let's take a look at uh, a table of uh, x the sum up to and the sum itself so one the sum is one for two we have to add two factorial to one that's three 3 factorial, we have to add 6 to 3, that's 9. So we have one of our first squares here. Uh, continuing, we have 4, uh, that's 24 onto 9, that's 33. 5, we have to add 120 onto 33. 153, 6, we have to add 720, so that's uh, 873. 7, let's see, 7 times uh, 720, so 7 factorial would be 0, 4, 5, 0, 4, 0. Add that to 873, and that's 5913. So that's about as big as I care to calculate, but we can imagine this going on further if we if we really needed to. So the first thing I notice is that uh, well we've identified one square, but uh, from a certain point on it appears as though the units digit in this uh, sequence is is always three, and I can kind of see why that is because once you get to five factorial. Uh, every factorial thereafter will always have a zero on it because uh, essentially the 5 factorial will already have a factor of 2 and a factor of 5 in it kind of built in. So everything higher will always be zero and that will maintain whatever units digit arrived at 5 factorial. So this pattern of 3 will continue. So let's try to focus on that and see if we can uh, either rule in or rule out the existence of the units digit of 3 being equated to some square number. So uh, let's take a look at a uh, table of that. We'll look at n versus uh, n squared and see if we can see some, some kind of pattern in the, uh, the units digit, perhaps. So n is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, or maybe 11. And the square is uh, pretty easy to list out. Okay, so looking at the units digit, we definitely noticed a kind of a striking pattern here. Um, 5, 6, 9, 4, 1, 0, 1. It looks like it repeats at this point. And we definitely see that uh, the, the number of available digits for the square uh, in the units digit is, is quite reduced from, from 0 to 9. And it, it basically uh, can e either be 0, 1, 4, 9, 6, 5. And it looks like uh, this pattern kind of mirrors around 5 in this case and then it repeats again from this point on and uh, that's that's kind of a curious property it may come as a surprise to you but once you get uh, accustomed to modular arithmetic this this is really no surprise at all and uh, it turns out that the uh, the remainder upon division by numbers uh, often forms these interesting patterns when you look at squares or cubes or fourth powers uh, in the case of squares the uh, division by 8 for instance uh, gives a very useful pattern often. If you look at the remainder upon division by 8 of n squared here, we can basically draw a similar table or where we have 1, uh, 0, excuse me, 1, 4, uh, the remainder here is 1, 0, 1, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 1, and that sort of continues as well. So here it's it's quite useful in that uh, we see that for division by 8, the remainder can only be 0, 1, or 4. It can't be 2, it can't be 3, it can't be 5, it can't be 6, it can't be 7. Uh, and we have a similar case here. 
uh, for the remainder upon division by 10, which is essentially the unit's digit, it can uh, be 1 or 4 or 9 or 6 or 5, but it can't be 2 or 3 or, let's see, 7 or 8. So it looks like 3 is excluded as a possibility for a square number, and that uh, kind of matches up with the unit's digit uh, on the left here for 4 factorial and beyond. And so it appears as though, from this point on, we really don't have the form of a square number, and there is no solution beyond uh, 4 factorial. And in fact, the only solution is uh, the x being 3, and the y of uh, y squared, y being 3 as well. So this is, in fact, the only solution, and we've uh, demonstrated that pretty clearly from, from these patterns here. So uh, anyway, that's a pretty interesting use of, uh, of uh, remainders upon division, and it's a, it's a pattern that often is quite useful in solving these types of problems. So hope that helps. Bye-bye.